Hi, today I'm going to show you how to solve practice problem 13.1 from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. I've redrawn the circuit to account for the mutually induced voltages. So first I'm going to perform a KVL on the first loop. As you can see we have 245 degrees or 200 angle 45 and we're leaving that so negative 200 angle 45 plus 4 I1 plus J8 I1 now we need to take into account the mutually induced voltages from the I2 side so we pay attention to the given sign convention and we continue it along the loop as you can see here I've paired the plus and the dot and transferred the plus to the opposite side. Once I've done this, I apply the negative to the opposite side and then shift it down and create a dependent voltage source. The dependent voltage source will be J1 of I2. So now I'm going to add the J1 of I2 dependent voltage source and set it all equal to zero. Once I'm done, I'm going to simplify this equation, and I'm going to get 4 plus J8 times I1 plus J of I2 is equal to 200 angle 45. Next, I'm going to perform a KVL at the second loop. So if you look above, it's going to be 10 which is going to be the voltage across the resistor, plus J5, which is going to be a voltage across the inductor in the second loop, all times I2. Then I'm going to add the mutually induced voltage. Now by taking that into account, we go ahead and look at the sign convention from the other side, transfer it over, find the pair, and then shift it up and create a dependent voltage source. The dependent voltage source is going to be J1 I of I1. And as you can see, I've labeled it above. So now I can finish up the KVL by adding J1 I1 and setting that all equal to zero. Now I'm going to simplify the equation by writing J1 I1 is equal to negative 10 plus J5 in parentheses times I2. I'm going to multiply this entire equation by J1. And if you recall, J has a value of the square root of negative 1. So the equation will simplify to negative I1 equals negative times 10J minus 5 is times I2. Simplified, I'll get I1 is equal to 10J minus 5 times I2. Now I'm going to substitute my I1 value into the first KVL equation. When I substitute it in, I'm going to get 4 plus J8 times 10J minus 5, all times I2, plus JI2 is equal to 200 angle 45. Now we can expand this by writing 40J minus 20 minus 80 minus 40J all times I2. Now we can see here that the 40s are going to cancel and we can combine negative 20 and 80 to get negative 100 times I2 plus J of I2 is equal to 200 angle 45. I'm going to rewrite it and it's going to show the rectangular form negative 100 plus J all times I2 is equal to 200 angle 45.
Now we need to recall an identity that theta is equal to arctan of b over a plus 180 if a is less than 0. And in this instance, a is negative 100, so that's satisfied. So I'm going to set it up. Theta is equal to arctan of 1 over negative 100 plus 180 degrees. And we're going to get 179.42 degrees. This is roughly 180 degrees. Next, we need to solve for r, which is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which in this instance is a negative 100 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 100. Now this 100 angle 180 is being replaced, replacing the 100 plus j. So if we rewrite it out, it'll be 200 over 45 degrees over 100 times 180 degrees is equal to 2 angle negative 135 degrees. Now that is going to be I2. So please, please ignore that I2 above. Now if we refer back to the original problem, we could see that we're solving for v naught, And from here, the v naught is part of the I2 loop. So from here we can write v naught is equal to 10, which is the resistance of the resistor, times the current I2. 10 times I2, which we solved for, which is 2 negative 135 degrees is equal to 20 angle negative 135 degrees, and that's our solution.